Hey everybody, in this video I'm going to show you how we can identify coefficients that we need for our Taylor series. What I'm showing you right now is a graph from my previous video where, um, where, where we looked at examples of, of polynomials that we use to, to, uh, to derive their specific functions. And in this video I would like to generalize this even further. And our goal by the by the end of the video is to let's make this power series more generic. And I will make these coefficients I'll make this graph available in the description below and and you can by all means mess with these sliders and and uh, and see how these different different coefficients influence the shape of polynomial and our goal for this video is is to is to identify what these numbers are going to be of course you, you can go people even higher to like x to the how, like however much how much higher you want to go and for simplicity i would i would like to start with 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 an easy function like uh, like this one and what's nice about uh, about a function like e to the x is its derivative is e to the x and so, uh, and so if we were to find find the um, find the coefficients by hand, we we don't. This is one less step for us, which is to differentiate this functions as many times as as, as there are many polynomial terms that we're looking to find. Uh, and so. Let's go back to that um, generic polynomial that we're looking at, and a sad expression here. We would like to find a. We like to know. Yeah, I realized the answer is right down here. Our goal is to to uh, to identify the first term and. And, and and the way you find it is because this is our constant term, this is this is the this is this function evaluate we at zero. And I should have said up front that that we, that we are that we are centering the polynomial, or we are centering the the expansion around x equals zero for simplicity. Um, and so. So e to the zero, that that is one. And and for the next term, we we're looking for a we're looking for a term such that if you differentiate the linear term, you'll you get the same derivative as this function here. And so it's so um and so, so in this case, the derivative is still e to the x, and if you evaluate it at at zero, you'll find that the slope is one. And so, it's and so therefore the the, the coefficient is one, and you multiply that by x, you you get this term here. And and uh, and if you go through the same process. Um, by its generalization, uh, you'll you'll find that x x squared is not necessarily working for is not really working as an approximation because um, as if you took the derivative of this term here, you apply the power rule and and this and this too multiplies up to the front and so so we need to counter that by deriving it by by dividing excuse me by two 
And in terms of how at, at, at the how the cubic term is is found. You, you you need to you need to not only divide it by three, but you also need to divide it by two. And if if you continue down this path, you'll find you 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 might start to notice a pattern, where if you want to, if you want the fourth term, you. You, you, you not only need to divide by 4, we also need to divide by 3 and divide by 2 and, and so on and so forth and, uh, and you might begin to notice that the pattern here is, spoiler alert, factorial and, and that's why if, if, you, if you were to generalize a function, if we call this, well, as f of x, it would be f of zero plus the f one times the first derivative. It's not one times; it's the first derivative of zero. Divide by one factorial. I want to write it out for um, let's be explicit on what we're doing. We'll do second derivative center at zero and divide that by two factorial. This is x, this is x squared. And, and this is essentially the generic formula for any equation. Take that back, any continuous equation because if we have uh, if we, if we have have some kind of disconnect in the graph then this process won't work very well now we look at a function like sine of x we we, we do the same process so let's bring this graph back and And we do the and we follow the same process. So sine of x evaluate as zero, that is zero. And the derivative of sine of x that's cosine of x. And cosine of x evaluate at zero is one. And you need to divide that by 1, so that is still 1, so that's why it's still x. And the derivative of cosine of x is, is, uh, is minus sine of x. And, and, and so you evaluate that as 0, so that's still 0, so you just move on to, to the next term. Um, and that, and that becomes minus the cosine of x evaluate at zero that, that that is one and so so that'd be x to the third over three factorial and at this point you might begin to no notice a pattern with sine of x because because um, because as you go down the derivative path and it knows that the signs flip when you go go from cosine of x to sine of x because the derivative of cosine of x is, is the minus of cosine and um, this is also another one of those 
nice equations that that they can generalize to this term here. But if it's an equation that's not really something that can be um, generalized into a summation formula like this, that, that that is okay. We still have means to do this. Uh, we just won't be using a summation symbol. We, we would be using using um, using other calc notations to to represent it. And and so let's look at the look at something a little more involved. And um, for this example, I'll, I'll use use e to the x squared. And um, one of the nice things about Desmos is you don't need to know the derivative offhand. Um, finding the first derivative might be okay because because um, you, just, you just need to use the chain rule to to uh, to differentiate this. That's as you know, you find the derivative of the inner function, then you multiply that by 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 e to the x squared, which as a first derivative, it's it is not terrible until you start seeing um, until you you start to have to differentiate this thing for a second time, because now not only you have to deal with this term here, but now and now you got this other product to deal with. And so, we'll just simply generalize this by saying, well, um, we'll just evaluate this function at zero, right? We'll have the calculator do it for us. And was and then, um, and what the first derivative, so, so this is a, uh, so this is a, a single quotation mark that I'm using. I, I think they. Um, th th think the better term is prime. So you have f prime of prime at zero. Actually, in fact, let's. Let's generalize this that they they want to center at zero. And. And we'll just start adding terms f double prime of, we'll start putting this thing for a. And this is divided by two, x squared. I'll, I'll go up to the third term because it, I'd like to show you what happens when we start to move away from zero? What if our centering is not zero? Because you might have cases where approximating at a different point out here would be more favorable. And so, I'm just making sure I did this right. Yeah, this approximation isn't... I'm not really happy with what I'm looking at. That's why I want to go one more term. Much better. You could change this to a function you want. Make it as crazy as... as as you like, so 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 as long as they're defined with, with within within the range that you're looking for, and uh, and so what happens if we decide that a different point is more favorable? What if a is two, and I'm expecting this to mess up our polynomial? I think two, a equals two already messed it up. Okay. That's expected because 
we want our is uh if, if we're going to shift where you want the center polynomial you should also apply that transformation to your other terms Right, so you can see that that by centering it around one. So before we center at zero, and you, you saw that the expansion actually looked good around the minus one to one range. Uh, but but now now we chose to shift this over by one unit, and you can see that the approximation looks very good. But Around, around this area here, but then once you move over towards the left, you, you see that begins to degrade. But, you know, if, if, this, if this is the region that you're interested in, it's not necessarily a bad thing. So what I want to do is I want to save this graph and and this URL you see up here, I'll make it available in the description. And and uh, go have some fun with this thing. And um, I do understand this. This is this is one of the more confusing topics. And so it, so uh, if you want more detailed explanations in in other ideas that that I've talked about, so those would be power series. If you want to see a detailed explanation of that. Let me know. Um, the, 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 um, yes, uh, just ask away in the comments. And um, and for those of you who are here to who are here for for the graph arts, um, that is most definitely not going away. Um, in the upcoming videos, do come out for videos where I demonstrate how to. How to uh, how to graph some more art? So that's coming back. And uh, if you found this video helpful, as always, always um, leaving a like. It's definitely helpful. Um, subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. And what I find most valuable is is is, is what you put in the comments. And so anything, anything you want to see different, anything you want to see better, that's what I care more about. Um, all right, so hope you benefited, hope you found it useful, and I'll see you next video.